Chair, the speaker recognizes for what purpose? This does the gentleman from California rise. Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1211 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 1211, a bill to amend Section 552 of Title V, United States Code, commonly known as the Freedom of Information Act, to provide for greater public access to information and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa, and the gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Cummings, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from California. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on the bill under consideration. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield, my, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. H.R. 1211, the FOIA Oversight and Implementation Act, or FOIA Act, is a bipartisan bill approved unanimously by the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee last March. I co-sponsored the legislation which Ranking Member Elijah Cummings authored. The bill is a, is a product of a joint effort by our staffs. The legislation has been endorsed by 29 nonpartisan transparency groups, including the Project on Government Oversight, known as POGO, Sunshine in the Government, and the Sunshine Foundation, and the American Society of News Editors. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's critical at this time that the American people believe and actually receive the information that lets them understand what their government is doing. A key provision of this bill is to codify requirements in a FOIA memorandum issued by President Obama and Attorney General Holder that includes making presumption of openness the standard law of the land. That means that if an agency can, that an agency can only withhold if the disclosure of such records would cause foreseeable harm. This shifts the burden of proof from the public requester seeking information about a government agency's with which he must now demonstrate that he has the need to the government being open and transparent unless it has a good reason to withhold. The FOIA Act of 2014 also requires an unprecedented level of proactive disclosure. That means that more information will be made available to the public without each individual interest in the information needing to separate FOIA requests to get it. Mr. Speaker, in plain English, if one person and then another person, or one entity and then another entity, seem to want to have the same information, rather than the agencies possibly posting it publicly, they will be required to post it publicly. So that which a few agencies want to know, or a few private organizations want to know, the entire public would have easy access. Another way of putting it is, if you're going to tell one person that it's reasonable to have public access, then all the public should have easy access to that information. These proactive disclosure requirements are intended to make the information sharing routine, a routine part of government. Like the Data Act passed earlier this year, which the House approved, uh, <coughs> the FOIA Act requires all information be posted in an electronic, publicly, accessible format, raw data whenever available as the original format so that it can be machine searched and give the widest ability for the public to have not just access to the letters, but access to the meaning and the cross meaning of this information. Under the bill, more agencies uh, will be using technology to increase transparency by processing FOIA requests through a centralized web portal. Users will submit requests in one location where agencies can automatically post their response. This kind of one-point access is something the public has long waited for from the federal government. The legislation before the House today modestly amends the committee, report, the committee reported bill by establishing an open government advisory committee housed within the National Archives Office uh, of Government Information Services. The Open Government Advisory Committee will ensure that, that reforms efforts conti <coughs> continue after this bill is acted. 
Mr. Speaker, this FOIA amendment, uh, amendment to the FOIA law, is one of the most important additional accesses to the American people. And I might, might note with thanks that this was an initiative begun by this administration, by President Obama, that we believe should be there for all times. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Uh, for what purpose does the gentleman from Maryland? Speaker, I uh, yield myself such time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. Thank you very much. Um, Speaker, I yield. I, I, I want to thank uh, Chairman Issa for uh, sponsoring this bill with me. Uh, this bill, if enacted, would be a landmark reform of our most important open government law, the Freedom of Information Act. This legislation would make significant improvements to the current law, which has not been consistently implemented. During the Clinton administration, Attorney General Janet Reno adopted a policy under which the Department of Justice would defend an agency's use of a FOIA exemption only when the agency could reasonably foresee that disclosure would harm an interest protected by that exemption. In the Bush administration, Attorney General John Ashcroft reversed this standard and directed the Justice Department to defend agency decisions to withhold records as long as they had a legal basis for doing so. President Obama, to his credit, on his first day in office, directed agencies to implement FOIA with a presumption of openness. Attorney General Holder overturned the Ashcroft standard and reinstated the foreseeable harm standard. The legislation before us today would codify in law this presumption in favor of disclosure no matter who is president. Under this bill, an agency would not be allowed to withhold information in response to a FOIA request unless disclosure is prohibited by law or would cause specific identifiable harm to an interest protected by one of FOIA's exemptions. This bill also would create an advisory committee to make recommendations to improve government transparency. The President recently endorsed this idea in the Open Government National Action Plan issued by the Administration in December of 2013. This legislation also would create a pilot project to encourage participation in a centralized FOIA portal a centralized portal such as FOIA Online that is run by EPA allows requesters to use one website to file requests to multiple agencies. The bill also would strengthen the Office of Government Information Services by enhancing its role in providing guidance to agencies and ensuring that agencies notify requesters of their right to use, use its uh, mediation services. The bill would strengthen the independence of this office by allowing it to send testimony and reports directly to Congress without approval from the Office of Management and Budget. I urge every member of this body to support this open government legislation by voting for it. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, uh, the gentleman from California. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself some time as I may consume. Gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We, uh, we don't often find in this body the kind of consensus behind something that, as the ranking member said, has gone both ways under different presidents. I'm a proud Republican, but I believe that the order given by President Obama was the right order. The order given by President Bush, perhaps in light of 9-11, perhaps in light of other con considerations, might have seemed right at the time. But let me make something clear today. On our committee, there is unanimity. The American people must have access to all information unless there is a specific reason to withhold it. This requirement under FOIA today will drive the Data Act and other reforms that will cause information to be likely stored in formats that's easier for agencies to determine that which they must withhold. And we think it's important. Today, legions of people often spend countless hours redacting nothing more than one name or one social security number that cannot be found except by a set of eyes scanning over it. 
So in addition to the American people getting what they're entitled to under this act, we believe that it will drive the kind of innovation and automation that actually will save the American people money, cause more information to be available. And just as census data is critical to our economy, so is access to what your government is doing, planning to do, or thought about, talked about, or did in the process of making laws, regulations, and rules. So I join with my colleague on believing that this is a time in which we say this president acted properly in how he ordered something. We believe codifying it so that no follow-on president could modify it or fail to deliver what this legislation envisions. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves, the gentleman from Maryland. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I, cons I consume and I am about to close. Gentleman is recognized for such time as you may consume. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, again, I want to thank Chairman Issa for his, his work, his hard work on this. Uh, this is so very, very important. I often tell my constituents, Mr. Speaker, that this is our watch. We are the guardians of the democracy today. And it is important to us to pass on a stronger and a better democracy than the one we found when we came upon this earth. A, a significant part of any democracy is openness, where people can know what the government is doing. When you have a representative government, people come to the town hall meetings trying to find out what's going on. Now they, have, they can go to computers and find out what's going on. But we must have as much openness as possible and, I, and reasonable. And I think that this is a, a, a big step in the right direction of preserving that part, part of the democracy that calls for transparency. And so I agree with the chairman. This is so much bigger than us. This is not just about this moment. This is about generations yet unborn. This is about people trying simply to be a part of their democracy trying to understand it, trying to use information so that they can be participants in it. If they do not know what's going on, it's kind of hard to participate. If they do not know what's going on, it's kind of hard to uh, go to their representatives to urge them to make appropriate changes. And so with that, I urge all the members of our body to uh, vote in favor of this legislation. And with that, I yield back. The gentleman from Maryland yields back. The gentleman from California. Thank you, Speaker. As I close, I want to thank my partner in this uh, legislation, Mr. Cummings. In order to get this kind of legislation, you do, do need to make sure that you've dotted the I's, and I believe we've done so. The minor modification that was made between the time it left the committee and the floor was one that was done on a bipartisan basis. Were this to go back through our committee, of course it would pass unanimously. Therefore, I urge all members vote yes on H.R. 211 support the bill, support 